what have I gotten myself into? <sighs> Let's make some clothes. This is kind of a part two. So if you want to watch part one, check out this video where I explain why I'm making this capsule wardrobe and all the pieces that I'm making within it. Three-parter, this is number two. But just a quick recap, what I'm doing, I'm making a kind of a capsule wardrobe because I'm going on a trip very soon. I only have a backpack, so there's a limited amount of things that I can carry with me. And I want to have some really nice clothes, but that was the end of that sentence. I, I want to have some really nice clothes. <laughs> My wardrobe just needs a refresher. I quit buying new clothes for the most part about three or four years ago. So the only things that I've added into my wardrobe are things that I've made, things that I've bought at thrift stores. I've also bought jeans new a few times in the last few years, just because those are kind of hard to make. What are we making today? I'm glad you asked. We're making a dress from charm patterns. I know I use charm patterns a lot, but I really like them. They're super great for beginners and all their designs are really cute. We're actually making the dress that I have on. I'm gonna remake this in a green plaid. And we're also gonna be using this as the mock-up because while I love this dress and it's one of my favorites, I don't like how kind of baggy the top is. So we're gonna fix that on the pattern today. We're also gonna be remaking a top I made when I first started sewing. That's absolutely adorable, but I made it out of muslin and also I didn't really know how to sew. So we gotta remake it. It's got holes everywhere. Ah, mm, let me go get it. So it's this, it's this cute little crop top. The button's in the front. It's got this pin tucks in the front. It's got this frill on the shoulders and it's sleeveless and it's so cute. But I uh, didn't finish any of the seams. And these are all just raw. Just raw in there. Look at that. How messy. And there's some so holes. Mm -hmm. Holes where I tried to so the bias around the top, the hem on the frill is real messy. So we're gonna remake this. That would be really cute under the dress and with all the pants we made last time. And I will probably make, let's go ahead and say it more. I'm gonna make a couple of these. Check our fabric in just a second. That's one dress, two shirts. And then if time permits, I'm gonna make another dress with a matching shirt. The shirt won't be worn with the dress. It's just a shirt made out of the same material as the dress. So they match. Let me grab my fabrics we we can talk about that. Okay, first up, the biggest part, stress. This really cute green plaid for the top. I have a few, I have a few. Just plain white, matches everything. And then I also have this leftover from a shirt that I made a while ago, and I want to see if I can make this work. It's really cute too. For the second dress and shirt, I have this little black floral. And the material is really thin, and it doesn't wrinkle easily, which is great when you are living out of a backpack. So, also it's very hot and humid where I'm going. So a nice little dress would be just the thing. So here's the pattern for the top. And honestly, I don't know why I have this pattern or why I bought it originally, because it's it's a little too boho for me, but this top ended up being cute. So there's nothing wrong with the fit of the top. So we're just gonna straight from the package again, just make it. The This charm dress is called, I think it's called the apron dress, something like that. Put it here, put it here. And one thing I want to fix is we're going to take, there's two darts right here, and we're going to take those in about half an inch on each side, I think. It would be good. And I think that's it. Uh, it's got this ruffle at the bottom, and I love the ruffle. I don't know if I'm going to add the ruffle to this dress. We'll see. One thing I really like about this dress is that it's got ties. So it's adjustable. 
And I very much like that in my clothes. That's something I've really been trying to focus on with my my own like garments that I wear every day, not my like this stuff. Really like adjustability in clothes because sometimes you just don't you just don't want to be snatched. You know? You're bloated, you don't feel great, you still wanna look cute, you just like don't want something squeezing in on you. I like that. Oh, the second dress is called it's called like the Huges, Huge Dress, Hudges. It's this dress. I've worn it a few times on this channel. I have two different ones. Okay, that's enough chit chat. Let's let's get on with this project. It's a good idea to trace your pattern on a separate sheet of paper before making any alterations. I'm actually pretty bad about this and don't do it most of the time, which comes back to bite me in the butt sometimes. The fabric is really wrinkly and it's also a very thin linen. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron everything out. Cutting out your garment while your fabric is wrinkled can cause some major fit issues later on. Since this is an actual wardrobe piece for me and not just a costume, I'm doing some extra steps that I wouldn't normally do because I'm pretty lazy, but I want these to look really nice and last a long time. I need to make one more adjustment to the pattern. Uh, because I am long-waisted or short-waisted, I don't know which one. Here is where the tie is, but here's where my waist is. So it's like an inch below where my waist is. So if I want this to tie at my waist, which I do, I need to extend the bodice down an inch. So let's do that. A lot of patterns will have a line indicating where to adjust the length of a garment, but this one doesn't have one. So I'm just taking a guess. I draw a line that's 90 degrees from the center front, which is cut on a fold. Then I cut at that line, separating the pattern pieces and then adding an inch there and retaping everything down. Now I should have made this line through the dart, but I didn't and I'll figure this out later. The skirt pieces were absolutely massive. So I had to go all goblin mode and cut them out on the floor. One thing I don't like about this dress is the pocket situation. So like, see how you can see my pocket? And also it's like, it's just not that big. I feel like it could be bigger. So here's our pocket. She's like, oh. So one thing I like to do with my pockets is take a bit of twill tape from right here-ish and pull it up into the waistband so that the pocket always stays here and doesn't do that, which is why I have this situation here. Okay, so bigger pocket. <laughs> no. Now we can pull this kind of space up here and put the pull tape, put it in the waistband. Lots of pocket room. Much better. Next. After I have everything cut out, there's mostly just scraps left. So I cut those scraps into three inch strips and use that for the ruffle. Now I'm finally cutting out the shirts. Pay no attention to the cute blue fabric with the roses and the snakes. This is gonna break my heart later. Got everything cut out now, or at least we got the first dress and two shirts cut out. I hate gathering, but the frill on the bottom of this dress is really cute. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. There's a lot to this skirt. So instead of doing all the math, that is involved with trying to figure out how long of a strip I need for the frill. I just took everything that was left over and cut three inch strips out of it. I'm gonna sew all these together and then I'm just gonna use a gathering foot to attach it to the bottom of the skirt. That way I don't have to actually like physically pull threads and gather. <laughs> That's so annoying. And after this lady over here, I'm a little done with gathering, so not today. Okay, this, I think, let's, this dress is actually very simple. It will come together quick by just 
set my little tushy down and actually do it. Also, I might have made a mistake with the pattern and where I extended it. I probably should have extended it closer to the bottom, like through the dart, so that the dart still comes up to apex, but since I put it at the top of the dart, the dart is now gonna end a little low. I don't... Oh, I know how I, I, That's an easy fix. Just extend the dart. Uh, okay. All right, I think that means I need to quit for today. Compromise, I'm gonna pin the darts. Well, I gotta fix the dart now. Fix the dart, pin the darts, and then I can call it for today if I so wish. Now it's time for darts. I'm making darts. You pin the darts and then sew the darts and that's how you make darts. Darts, yeah. I know I already started sewing yesterday, but I decided I wanted to get everything cut out so I have everything running and I can just like sew. So I need to make a couple of adjustments to the huges, hedges, hedges dress pattern, which is just I'm wearing currently. Can't see the bottom, but it's got buttons that go all the way down. This one goes to my shin. It was supposed to be longer, but I didn't take an account that the fabric was directional, and so you can only lay it down on the fabric a specific way. And I didn't have enough to make it longer because this fabric was a little pricey. So I didn't buy extra. <laughs> Lesson learned. The adjustments I'm gonna make for this dress are, again, my waist is here and the bottom of the bodice is here. So like another, again, an inch higher than it should be. Also, has this cute lacing up the back, which uh, doesn't do much for me since it doesn't lace my waist. It stops well above my waist. So we're gonna make sure that the lacing goes down my waist this time so that, again, we go back to adjustability, the stress, is so comfy, but maybe sometimes I want to feel a little bit more snatched. So, you know, can tie it to give you a little bit more waist. And also I would like to give it a slightly different neckline. I think just a, a slight V like this. This pattern gives us a place to adjust the length of the bodice. So I'm gonna make this alteration straight on to the pattern because this is something that I want to do going forward if I ever make this dress again. I, I want this same alteration and it's not like something major so I'm not going to retrace it for this one. And then for the neckline, I'm just gonna fold the piece over. <laughs> Ta-da! New neckline. I also need to go ahead and cut this out so I know how much fabric I have left over because I'm not sure how much I bought and I need enough for another shirt. And if I don't have enough, I'll have to go get more. And I don't know if the fabric store still has it. So so how many, how, what are we making? We're making two dresses and three tops. Why do I, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the things I said I was gonna do and then we can come back and I don't know, do some sewing or something, whatever. Devastating news. I don't even have enough fabric to finish cutting the skirt. This is totally okay. I am not gonna cry. Okay, let's go to the fabric store and pray that they have this fabric still. Okay. Because of course, it's raining. This is coming out Mill House. Of course they don't have it. Oh, but they do have this. So I guess I'm gonna get a few yards of that and uh, just pivot. Okay, I lied. I got this. Pretty sure it's cotton or rayon. It's like a chiffon. <sighs> It'll work. Okay, back home and 
Até você se não acha. Okay, today is not going according to plan. That's okay. Fabric is in the wash. We'll be able to cut it out later this evening. Until then, let's start something else. I don't know, there's so many things. Why am I making so many things at one time? <sighs> Who thought this was a good idea? Who let me do this? I need better adult supervision. Okay, bodice for the green dress. Let's do that. We got, we got those other darts we gotta do. And gotta sew the back and the straps and whatnot. Great, plan, let's go. This piece is gonna be the strap for the dress. I sew the long strip hot dog style and leave only one end open, then turn the whole thing right side out, give it a nice press. My great grandmother taught me to use a chopstick to push out your points. And that's a Mimi fact. Mimi fact. Sure, all of my projects in various forms of doneness. And let's be real, I've only started sewing one. Okay, we have our two flounce shirts here. We have the hugest dress here with the matching shirt for my significant other here and the apron dress here. I've made a huge mistake. I guess now that everything's cut out, I'll start focusing on one project at a time. And since we've already started sewing the apron dress, let's continue with that, shall we? I'm just gonna take a break to go cry in the bathtub really quick. I'll be right back. Now it's time to sew all those long three inch strips together to make the ruffle. I was going to do them on the machine, but decided to take them over to the serger because I didn't want to have to sew them and then do the serging. So I decided to save myself a step and take the lazy way out and just serge them to begin with. And then serge all along one side, which will become the hem. I just turn that up and sew it down and then hem, done. I've gone ahead and finished the skirt. She's got body for days. And put in the pockets. And I put in that twill tape to keep the pocket over here. There we go. I just need to attach the bodice to the lining and then attach it to the skirt. Put the ruffles on, which feels like that, uh, that clown gag where starts pulling scarves out of his sleeve. And that just keeps going. There's an actual mile of this. Weird thing with the skirt, where the front meets the back, there's this like cliff where they don't line up. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I don't remember that when I made it the last time and I didn't make any alterations to the pattern. So this shouldn't be there. And I just, maybe I like cut it wrong or something. No, what happened was this fell off. This matches up perfectly. <sighs> this little piece of my pattern fell off and I didn't realize it. Turns out it was important. That's not that important, it's fine, but still. It's annoying. I'm gonna hang this skirt overnight because some of it's cut on the bias. So it needs to hang overnight to let everything fall before I actually hem it. Okay, let's continue this tomorrow. Day three. Here I am in my PJs dressed like Adam Sandler and you know what that means. That's right, it's time to get shit on. Since I had to go to the fabric store yesterday, that really took up a lot of my allotted spoons. So I did not get as much done as I would have liked 
Today, we will finish the green dress, but we're gonna save working on it till later because I want it to continue to hang for a few more hours. My goal for today is to finish the green dress and finish both of the frill tops. I would like to get started on the other two projects today, but let's keep a realistic goal so we're not disappointed at the end of the day. I'm gonna start with the white top because I have white thread on the machine already and I don't wanna switch. <laughs> I don't have white thread on the machine. It's green, so I gotta switch anyway. Whatever. Still, we're starting with the white top. All right, well, let's get to work. Change of plans. We gotta pivot again. I have to. I have to scrap this top because I missed a piece when I was cutting everything out, which would be the center front bit, which would be the placket, which would be where you like add the button and buttonholes. And without it, the shirt was probably is probably gonna be too small and also weird because you kind of need the placket. So yay! Now, am I just gonna get rid of one of my projects and free myself up and not do five projects in four days? <laughs> it's like you don't know me at all. Of course I'm not. We're replacing it with this pattern, this fabric. Look how cute it is. I just found it at the fabric store yesterday. And it's freaking adorable. And it'll actually go with other things in my wardrobe, which is the whole point of a capsule wardrobe. Unlike the blue shirt, which would go with nothing except blue jeans. I don't know if I mentioned, I made my significant other a shirt out of that fabric. And so I was making myself a matching shirt so we could match because yes, I am that person. Let's get this cut out and actually start sewing because, oh boy, I don't have a lot of time left. Okay, it's fine. It's totally fine. Everything's fine. Time for the tops. These are the front pieces and I'm adding in the pin tucks and pressing them very neatly. Then you take them over to the machine to sew the tucks together and then take them back over to the iron to press them down and then take them back over to the machine to base them down. Oh my gosh, these flounces. This is like a day's work. That is so cute though. Look at that. White well, one's definitely got a little bit more body. This one's still cute though. Genuinely took me forever. Next part. Everything's coming along. Don't got that much left to do. Let's go, let's go. This top is four pieces like most tops with a princess seam, but the center, front, and back are sewn together at the shoulders, and the same for the side, back, and side front. That way, you take the frill and sandwich it between those two big pieces, and then you sew up your side seam. After I sew it, I very carefully, very carefully, run that seam through the serger, and then give it a good press. Okay. I have two shirts. They're basically done. They just need button and buttonholes. Counting those is done. It's pretty late. I uh, goofed around a little bit. Did some procrastinating, but I got a bird feeder in the mail. So I'm gonna work on the dress just a little bit longer, but I'm probably not gonna film anymore tonight. So see you guys tomorrow. Here we are, day four. The apron dress is nearly finished. She's got her ruffles. She is cute. She is the star of the show. The swoosh on this. So perfect. And let me tell you, so many things have gone wrong with this dress. <sighs> when you make alterations to the top of a dress that attaches to the skirt, it's best to also make the same alterations to the skirt so that they line up. I had to add darts here since I took in so much here. Since I brought the waist in, I did this weird thing here where like this was gaping out. I thought it was gonna be an easy fix where I could just open up the lining and the fabric and then just kind of sew that seam, but it threw the seam off, so then I had to go through and like kind of grade that up. But also, I had stitched and understitched the lining already, so I had to undo that. Listen, 
I just, I'm, I did not throw a single fit. Just know that. That. That's some character growth right there. She's so cute. And she looks really cute with this, this top. Okay, so this is done. The next two things I need to make are the Presley shirt, which I'm not gonna do on camera because the last capsule wardrobe video, the part one of this, I make two of those. I alter them to extend the sleeve out so they're an all-in-one sleeve, but it's the same shirt. So we're not gonna show that. Just consider that done. So the next thing is the Hughes dress, Hudges? Hudges dress. And I think, I think it should not take me long to put this dress together. It's very simple. I've made it twice before, so really I should, I should know what I'm doing already and be able to breeze through that. I really hope, I really hope I can't, can't take another disaster like this dress. I am prepared for working in the office all day. I have my plate of snacks that I can just reach for and munch on all day. Turns out that's how you keep me motivated and working. Just uh, copious snacks. All right, no more goofing around. We're getting, we're getting it done today. Getting it done today. This dress is super simple for how cute it is. You start by sewing a long tube, cutting that into three inches, and then that becomes your lacing holes, straps, loops, and then that becomes your lacing loops. You attach those to the center back on both sides, and you sandwich those between the center back and the back side piece. Sew those together. This bodice also has a princess seam. If you can't tell, I really like princess seams. And the trick to sewing them is just a lot of pins and going very slowly. Okay, we have a top. I am dreading doing the sleeves. They're not, they're just regular. There's nothing complicated about the sleeves. I just really don't want to do them. So I'm not going to right now. I'm gonna leave that for last. Let's put the skirt together. We got our skirt. Now I just need to attach these and put on the sleeves and we're done. This is like a Stevie Nicks look here. Okay, this video is probably too long now. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this, do the button and button holes on everything because I haven't put them on any of these yet. And then do all the tidying up and hand stitching on the inside and I'm done. And we're just gonna go ahead and move on over to the reveal. We're done here, goodbye. I did it. Oh my God. That was too many things to do in four days. Are there pins strategically placed within some of the garments? 
I don't see how that's any of your business and I don't know why you're asking, so. Next question. I really like how everything came out. Everything's so cute. This dress is freaking adorable. I love both of these tops and the, the black dress came out great. I don't, I don't really have anything to say about them. They're all cute. You know, I had some, had a lot, a lot of issues with this dress. The dress was like half of my filming. <laughs> but you know, she came out great, so I forgive her, I guess. Hope you guys enjoyed the chaos that was, uh, that was this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate you the most. Uh, if you haven't already, check out this video where I make my mom's prom dress. That was a fun one. Check it out up here. And that's all I got. So I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye.